thank you guys again for joining for our, joining us for our first Real Talk uh, here in Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, it's great to have everyone joining in this Sunday night. And just a little background of why. Uh, before we pray, uh, we do have a special guest, uh, Julian Aguilar from the East Worship Center. Uh, has been a disciple here in Dallas for more than a few years, uh, even though he looks pretty young. So we'll have a great treat as he takes us through uh, the topic as we begin our first session uh, of Real Talk. And I'll read this because it succinctly tells us exactly what we're getting into. It said, Real Talk is to check our own heart and thinking against our call as disciples of Jesus. This is about removing the plank out of our own eyes so that we can effectively have real talk. Real talks would typically begin with real evaluation to help get a pulse of the attendees that are here uh, on the call. The definition of real, you may be thinking of that, is actually existing as a thing or occurring in fact, not imagine not supposed. What better place to start defining what's real uh, than in our own hearts, in our own minds, versus just talking about theology, ideologies, and just what we think. This mindset of real talk will also help set up the stage so that we can have, you know, really heart to heart conversation with not only disciples, but also those that are not in our church in a productive way. We will end each session with what we call real action because we don't want to just talk about it. We want to be about it as well. Uh, so we will end each session by having some time to think about, okay, what do I want to take out of this time together? So it would be a great time uh, to, to be able to continue to build, uh, to get to know each other, uh, we'll see how this progresses uh, as we uh, continue, but we're just starting off just once a month, uh, one time a month. And then if you need more talk, you got other disciples uh, in your purview uh, that you can reach out to and connect with. And of course, you always have God who has a listening ear uh, for everyone. Let's go ahead and pray. Uh, I'll ask uh, Pierre Sage. Uh, one of the, the guys who oversees our cultural connection team here uh, in the Dallas-Fort uh, Worth uh, Church. And Pierre, I will uh, unmute you so that you can kick us off in prayer. Let's see. So, okay, right. here I am. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Father, first and foremost, we are so thankful for the security and the acceptance that we find in you. Uh, thank you for allowing this time to be carved out, that we can come together and uh, engage in real talk. Uh, we pray that your spirit will be with us tonight, that you will use everything that's been prepared and everything that's presented to really help meet needs in our lives and in your church. We love you. We thank you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Let's start off with a little lighthearted question to start off our time. And I am going to put this little poll uh, here in a second. And I'm going to show you the, the question first. And then uh, you will have an opportunity uh, to answer. And this is what the question is, as I share my screen uh, with you guys. The question is about how uh, you speak. How do you communicate? It says, which animal best describes the general way that you talk? And I'm, I'm going to start the poll here in a second, but I just realized that when both my wife and I are on a device, I can't share the poll. So, hey, babe, I, I, have, I need to have you log off your phone and come in the room with me because I can't share the po poll with you on. But as you guys are contemplating your question, 
We're going to have you guys go ahead and answer this on the poll, and then I'm going to share the screen so that, so that we know who's on the call uh, today. Do we have a bunch of hummingbirds, uh, you know, quick talkers? Uh, do we got the slow turtle talkers? Do we got the quick strikers with the rattlesnakes? Uh, what, what do we have uh, in it? Wow. So here, here we go. Let's see. I think it may not because uh, she was on it. So what, what we'll go ahead and do, let me have you guys uh, wait once one moment as Alicio is uh, putting his answer there. Just one quick second. I think it's still not going to come in. All right, Derek, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do that. I'm going to make you co-host for a second. I'm going to come in and come back out uh, so that everything works uh, how we need it to work uh, for us. So I'll let you unmute and make you host. And I'll be right back. And Derek, why don't you, uh, which one would you say you are? Uh, and I'll be right back. Okay. I can actually do the poll for you. Do you want me to launch the poll? Oh, he went off. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, there we go. Okay, now the poll's, poll's going. Ooh, that's a tough one. Okay, all right, we're back. Yes. Thank you, Derek. So now we got five options. Uh, you may have other things, other animals that may come to mind when you think about how you generally talk, how do you generally communicate. But it'd be fun as we think about the uh, 30 or so people on this call. What are we dealing with? How would you describe the way that you communicate? Is it more like a puppy, more soft-spoken, you know, very encouraging? Uh, or is it more like a lion where I just don't want to get my, my head uh, chewed off? And I know some of you guys are on the uh, one call together. So we like Beth and Dave Sipos, you guys have the same answer. So that's pretty cool. I'll give you guys about 20 more seconds to answer the question, uh, which animal best describes the general way that you talk, that you communicate. Hey, Clint, do you mind describing? Because it's kind of hard to tell, you know, it's like what I thought the lion meant is not what you explained. Can you kind of explain? Because it might help figure yes. out. Yes, so a lion is more assertive, right? Definitely one that may have even more loudness in the way that you talk, but definitely is. It's one that's more assertive versus a puppy where it's like, hey, I'm just here to have fun. But then it may be even your speed of communication. Uh, some of us speak very fast. Uh, I remember the old Cosby show uh, where one of the uh, Vanessa's friends, she speak, you know, a mile a minute. Or you may be one of those that speak fairly slowly like a turtle. Uh, so whatever. Uh, you won't be bound by this. You don't have to put this on your resume. Uh, <laughs> no, so. I, I hear. What's, what's the what's rattlesnake? The oh, the, the, the rattlesnake and the hummingbird. So the, the hummingbird is more of the quick talker, right? Where it's tough for people even sometimes to, to get in because you're just so excited and you're talking. Rattlesnake, you know, that might be that person that can be quiet, but then they, bam, they hit you with something. They've been listening the whole entire time and you found out when they opened their mouth uh, for it. So let's, I'll give you guys about 10 more seconds then we'll share who, who we have on the call. As you see the different faces, uh, you may think, okay, yeah, we might have a lot of this and we might have a lot, a lot of that. But let's go ahead and show, I'm gonna end the poll and show you guys who's on the call today. 
So the top two answers. We have turtle is number one. It wasn't the majority, but we had about 30% uh, of those that are on the call. They're like, hey, I'm more of a slow speaker. I'm more calculated uh, in it. And then right behind that, we have some puppies. Uh, we have some puppies on the call that, that love to encourage, uh, that, that just want to be right next to you while we talk. You know, it might, might even be a close talker, right? Uh, shoulder to shoulder, which is probably very tough during uh, COVID. But we do have some hummingbirds and lions, but we only got one rattlesnake. We only got one. <laughs> Tell me how more. Oh, we have so. two. Sorry, I didn't get to play. Oh, gotcha. So we got two rattlesnakes uh, in it. So Amanda, were you one of the rattlesnakes? Yeah, I, I wasn't going to go for the rattlesnake, but after you explained, my roommate Tara was like, oh, you're more like the rattlesnake. So I was like, okay. <laughs> Hey, well, you have one person that says it, then, hey, I, I, I will go that route as well. Well, thank you guys for playing. This is just a, a, a way for us to jump in uh, with the questions, see who we have uh, on the call, uh, and, and have a little fun with it as well, using the animals, because we, we want animals to be taken care of. Well, let's continue to move. As I mentioned earlier, and for those that just uh, jumped on, Ju Julian Aguilar is going to be our person that will uh, really be teaching and guiding our conversation tonight. We'll do a little tag team uh, today. And I'm gonna share my screen once again. One of, the thing, one of the things that, as we discussed how to start this, we're like, okay, we can jump into some of these topics. Uh, we just got a new president that has uh, been heralded here. Uh, we've been going through social injustice. We uh, have uh, different same-sex attraction things that are happening. We have racial things. It's so many different things that we can start with. But what better place to start than with me, than with our own heart, the way that I communicate, the way that I receive information, how often am I offended? Uh, how often do I offend others? So what we'll do for our time today, Julian is gonna walk us through just this idea of kingdom versus empires. What's the principles of engagement? How do we converse with those that think differently than us and be able to do so in a godly way? Because when it's all said and done, we are trying to win the world to Christ by being a light. So Julian will help us uh, in this. He will guide our conversations. Uh, he will have some different scriptures. And after we have three sections, and after each section, we'll have an opportunity for you guys to chime in. And at the very end, we'll break up into smaller groups uh, to, to really digest and process uh, what we discussed. So without any further delay, I would like to introduce our brother in Christ, Mr. Julian Aguilar. Thank you, Clint. Uh, thank you so much for uh, asking me to do this. And you asked, how did Julian get chosen for this? Uh, well, I uh, started reading the book, Escaping the Beast, uh, a couple weeks back. Got really excited about the book uh, because I think it gave some good insight into how we need to be dealing with this time. 2020 has been a very unusual year. You think about from the pandemic to all the, the things that Clint has mentioned already. Um, it's, a, it's been a crazy 2020. I bet you none of you uh, thought that this would occur. None of you, it was not in your radar, uh, but we're here now. And uh, so, uh, so these principles that we're going to talk about is from the book. So uh, it's, not, it's not anything that I came up with, I had any insight. Uh, God did not speak to me. Uh, none of that uh, happened, uh, but I hope we, we can get something out of this. And uh, I think the idea is, is we can sit down as disciples of Christ and whether we uh, believe in uh, A or B, that we can come together and we can communicate in love and we can be unified as one people. And so 
you know, let's go ahead and turn. I hope everybody brought their Bible. Uh, you will need it. Uh, we're going to start off in Matthew chapter 22. And what I'm going to ask, uh, Mr. Joseph, you have your Bible with you? Okay. See, um, I wonder if uh, Clint, can you? Yes, I do. You? There you go. Okay. Thank you, sir. So we're going to start off in verse uh, 15. And I want everyone to understand that our king, Jesus, was approached with worldly issues. He was questioned on empire issues. And uh, here is one instance, and we're going to go from verse uh, 15 to 22. So, uh, Joseph, could you read that? Uh, Matthew. 22, verse 15 through 22. Matthew what? Matthew 15. Matthew 22, sorry. Okay. Matthew 22, 15 through 22. Yes, sir. All right. Got it. Thank you. It says uh, in Matthew 22, starting in verse 15, it says, Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay, you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what's your opinion? Is it right to pay the, the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show, me? show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, whose image, whose image is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, so, go, so give back to Caesar what's Caesar's, and to God what's God's. When they heard this, they were made. So they left him and went away. All right. Thank you. Thank you, brother, for sharing. So we got a situation here where the Pharisees and the Herodians are coming to Jesus. And the way they do this, uh, the way they come forward to him is very uh, empire-like. They came here smooth talking. I, I, I find it very interesting that they said, we know that you're a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. We also know that you're not swayed by others. So you got this sly group, sex of Jewish uh, people, basically coming and very trying to smooth talk Jesus, trying to lift him up in a sense, but Jesus sees through it. And he says, you hypocrites. And he says, he turns that worldly question that empire question into a kingdom answer. And you think of the two answers that Jesus could have given you, the two worldly answers that Jesus could have given them. If it was yes, you know, we should give to the Romans their, their taxes, then guess what's going to happen? The Jewish people are then going to be very upset with Jesus. On the other hand, if they say no, then guess what? Now he's upset the Roman Empire. And now this could bring some issues with, with them possibly bringing in charges against Jesus. So he sees through the tricks. He turns it into a kingdom thought, a kingdom answer. And uh, uh -oh. I think uh, we can go to the next slide. I can't do that plant. I don't know why. There you go. There we go. So this is the answer that Jesus gives them. Render to Caesars the things that are Caesars and to God the things that are God's. And at that point, that shut down the whole conversation. The whole, the persecution or the thought that, you know, I can get Jesus, I can trap him, the entrapment is then gone. And that's what we as disciples have to get to this point. I was talking to Clint earlier, you know, I understand we are not Jesus. We don't know God like he does. He is the embodiment of God on earth. So for us, 
we have this dilemma that we have to make these decisions and this thought decisiveness to make it a kingdom answer. And for us as humans, this might take a little longer uh, than what it took Jesus. But that's our goal to think about that, to give answers in the, a, a kingdom mindset. Uh, again, I'm gonna give you three principles and these principles are very easy. I, I think they're, they're pretty simple, simplistic. I think they're uh, easily understood. Uh, and hopefully uh, we, can, we can all understand them very clearly. And we'll go to the first principle is my first allegiance is to King Jesus and his kingdom. And uh, we're going to look at Acts 22, verse 16. And in Acts 22, 16, our kingdom begins here for us. You know, before that, we were sinful wretches condemned to death. Uh, but when we... In verse 16, it says, and now what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away, calling on his name. So your allegiance to Jesus began then. When you said Jesus the Lord and you were baptized in his name, your allegiance became to Jesus and Jesus only. And I remember that cold February day, 1991, I was 23 years old. And to be honest with you, could I have ever thought that 20, what's happening in 2020, could I would ever thought that that would happen then, back in 1991? And my answer would be no. And, but these things that are occurring now, I'm reminded when I said Jesus is Lord back then, that that still applies to us now. It doesn't change. My allegiance, my loyalty is to Jesus. In Philippians 3, verse 20, we are reminded that our, citizen, our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior from there the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I am a citizen of this country, but more importantly, I am a citizen in heaven. And that covers everything else. I uh, wrote out this excerpt from the book escaping the beast, and it says, we need to operate as the kingdom. That means that together we should align our loyalty to Jesus and then work through thoughtfully and prayerfully what allegiance to king and kingdom will look like in each situation. Much like the situation that Jesus had with the Pharisees and the Herodians, uh, we have to go through these, those same scenarios very thoughtfully and prayerfully uh, because our allegiance is to the kingdom first. And uh, I was uh, very sobered. I, I uh, was, you know, as, I'm not a Facebook person and I was not a Facebook person before. Uh, Bill and Sally mentor, uh, Ileana and I, and uh, they, suggested that we follow uh, Facebook to kind of get to see what people are saying and doing out in, in, in the world. And so uh, we then became, I wouldn't say avid fans of Facebook, uh, but we are semi familiar with Facebook at least. And uh, I, I was amazed at, uh, at a lot of the, the posts that were made uh, because I had to think, was Jesus first in that conversation, in that post? And 
is that showing loyalty to Jesus or to our worldly situation? And uh, so I, I have to be I'm reminded in Matthew 12, verse 25, we'll go ahead and go to that. In verse 25 and 26. He says, Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he's divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? It would re reminded me uh, that, like it says, a household divided against itself will not stand. And it's, it's true back in Jesus' time, and it's true now. We cannot be divided against each other. We cannot have a church divided amongst ourselves. And the thought is we have to be loyal to our king, Jesus, and the one kingdom. And uh, this becomes very challenging because we have to interact with the empire, with this world. And we have to have, have, we have, to have discernment as part of our guide through this whole process. And uh, because it is challenging at times, there are questions that are posted. There are situations that are that uh, come up that we have to give thought and prayer to to get through. Hey, Clint. Thank you, Julian. As he mentioned, and uh, thank you, James Thomas, for putting the scripture there uh, in the comments for us as uh, Julian is, is moving us through allegiance. This is a question you can answer via chat or you can raise your hand and I can call on you and have about a you know, 30, 60 second answer. But in your walk as a Christian, what competes most for your allegiance? I know for me, comfort is huge. I am in, innately a selfish person. So when it comes to comfort, I love being comfort. I don't like being too hot. I don't like being too cold. Uh, I like my bed to be perfect, right? I don't like the hair on my face to get too long because it's, it starts being uncomfortable. So, you know, when it comes to politics, when it co comes to those different things, they don't bother me as much as just my own comfort. That's, I got to get uncomfortable uh, because if I stay in my comfort zone, uh, then Clint ends up being the one that has the allegiance instead of Jesus. And let's take a moment. Uh, when you think about uh, your own self, I know Mallory, you have put the approval of others can be uh, something that competes for allegiance, right? Uh, peace. That's a huge one. You know, Jesus says, I, I give you my peace, right? Uh, and his peace has some tough times. They had a lot of fighting uh, in it. So I'll stop my screen just to make sure I can uh, see. But if, it, if anybody uh, has anything else, put in the comment. Uh, or if you want to, to speak uh, in, the, uh, in the greater chat room, please. Uh, pursuing physical fitness is Vernell they mentioned. Uh, we we want to be healthy. We want to be strong. We want to be fit. Uh, we which are good things, uh, as Paul said to Timothy. Th those are solid. They just can't take precedent over Jesus. Uh, James Thomas had mentioned when I rely on things to work, and it doesn't. That can be distracting, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, especially in our time and age now. 30 years ago, we knew internet was slow. Our phones could only do one or two different things. Uh, and we, every, now, everything is just like this, right? 
If we want it, we get it. If I want to listen to a certain song, I don't have to wait to the radio for it to come on. I just go YouTube, right? Or go pick up uh, one of the, uh, the, the sites and then Simple Nature always is going to be right there and looking at, some, uh, looking at us in our face. Security, fears, unrealistic expectations. Think about relationships. A lot of times we get into arguments with people because our expectations are unrealistic for them. It may be fine for us, but not for them. Mm -hmm. Sentimentality. Uh, one of the things that focus, we, we lose focus. So our allegiance, we, we were looking at Jesus, but something took our focus. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are all real life scenarios that we got to check ourselves in, right? We can definitely help our brothers and sisters, but we also got to check ourselves first for sentimentality. Uh, you know, Jonathan said, Nicole, you know, his wife can be, you know, his allegiance. And that's real. Our children, uh, our spouse, uh, our jobs, they can, they can supersede Jesus at times. But once we notice it, then we can take a step back so that we can put our trust in in God and not in ourselves and in situations. Uh, Pierre, do you have a, something you yeah, want to? I was gonna share for me, I know my emotions sometimes, you know, I start feeling things strongly and, and it's hard to shake off sometimes. And it becomes what I'm allegiant to as opposed to God. Very, very true. I mean, how many of us are emotional on this call, <laughs> right? I, uh, where? You know, I can go from zero to 60 just like that. Uh, and sometimes that can be awesome, right? Uh, but when the emotions start driving us and they're just taking, a, taking us along for the ride, then that can be uh, a problem. Uh, so we definitely got to watch uh, for that. So what we'll do uh, for these last two uh, pieces, when we think about uh, empathy and solidarity and mercy, We'll talk about these last two, but we'll we'll zoom through these uh, as Julian uh, look at these last two topics because allegiance is the most important thing. We have to see Christ for who he is. The branches that come out of that can be mercy and empathy uh, and really uh, solidarity. So we'll have these last two. Uh, Julian, he'll, he'll fly through these last two just so we can make sure we have time uh, to jump into uh, our breakout room. So Julie, let's go ahead and take us through uh, Mercy. Okay. Thank you, Clint. Let's go ahead and, and talk about that. Um, to get back to the slides. Uh, we're going to talk about mercy over judgment. And uh, Matthew 5, verse 7, uh, it talks about blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. We, we look at the definition of mercy and it hits home because it says compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. We think about ourselves and our sinful nature. It deserved death. We deserve death before Christ. And uh, so we should be very merciful to others. We need to consider Acts 2, verse 38, when he says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Not some of them, but all of them. Merciful. That is what God was. The counter to that mercy is judgment. And we can turn to Matthew 7, uh, verse 1, and we can go through this. I will not, I'm just going to kind of highlight uh, verse 1 through 6 for time's sake. But we, it says, do not judge or you too will be judged. Um, at the very end, I found it very interesting because it goes through this whole line about not judging others. 
Again, at the very verse of six, it says, do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. I found this very ironic, the sense that God was talking about not being judgmental, not to not judge, but yet he wants us to be discerning and to understand that, one, there's going to be those that are hard-hearted and those that are hostile to the kingdom. That's going to occur. And he wants us basically to understand don't waste your pearls. They're hard-hearted. We pray for them. We ask God to help them, to help them with wisdom and knowledge from God. But ultimately, he's telling us to turn and to grab your pearls and take them with you. He even tells the disciples in Matthew 10, verse 14, to basically, if you go to a town and you're unwelcome, he tells you, guess what? You head back out, you take your sandals, you, you, you dust dirt off of them, and you keep moving outside of that town. So we have to have a discernment to understand when we interact with the world, with the empires, we have to understand with discernment, okay, is this someone who's hard-hearted and not going to be, and not going to listen to the word of God and to God's principles or not? But ultimately, in, verse, in James verse 2, verse 5, it says, mercy triumphs over judgment. Do you want to hit the question there? Clint? Yeah, let me unmute myself. The ne next question, mercy or judgment? Which do you tend to emphasize when you are offended by someone? Do you tend to emphasize mercy or judgment? That's a question. Uh, you can raise your hand. Uh, you can show your face in the screen. <laughs> or you can put in the comments, which do you tend to emphasize when you're offended by someone, mercy or judgment? And so uh, we got some after some time, Mercy, right? <laughs> time is used loosely. <laughs> Maybe it's a minute. Hopefully it's not a year. Uh, but that, that could be uh, Mercy. We I got would, some judgment. I would say judgment. When I feel hurt, I, can, I have to really work toward, to, towards my emotions. Mm -hmm. Yes. It can be difficult. Uh, it can be very difficult. Uh, if someone want that that's answering, if you want to uh, raise your hand or just come off uh, mute and and give a little context behind your answer, uh, we'll love to hear. Uh, Derek. Yeah, for me it's interesting. I I think if it's offending me personally, I tend to be more merciful. But if it's offending my family or the church or our worldview of the church. I tend to be more judgmental. <laughs> so, so that's for me, the challenge is I, I can take it personally, but man, if it's toward my family or the church or toward my worldview as a, as a community, that's where I'm not as merciful. Mm, good, good point. It's a good point. Definitely a good point. It, it depends, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes family, if family offends us, we turn into that lion or that rattlesnake, right? <laughs> Uh, but if it's a stranger, a coworker, we like, eh, it just roll off my back. Mm -hmm. uh, Fernandez, I see you got your hand up. Um, hi, it's Marianne. Um, so um, I I have to work my way to mercy. Um, I don't always initially feel merciful, but I want to give mercy. I've been shown so much mercy by people on this call. I'm sure. I think anyone that knows me has shown mercy because uh, I just think we all need mercy. And so I'm motivated to work towards it in every, every time that I you know, am offended or upset about something, um, work in progress, for sure. Uh, we, we hear you. Yeah, we all are progress for sure. 
Yeah. Uh, we have one more, uh, Dave Cypos. Sorry, she's driving. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, uh, uh, I uh, strive to be uh, merciful and to have that kind of response mm -hmm. um, in situations. Uh, I think similar to what Derek described, I think I have a few hot button topics that are not um, necessarily focused on myself, but focused on people that I love or things that I cherish. Um, um, I've, uh, for me, w one area that may cause me to over respond, it, uh, as I've always said, I don't mind if someone hates me, but I hate being misunderstood. Mm. And, uh, and uh, what's not explicitly said there is, I would not want to be your friend if you didn't understand me. Right. That's a good point. Yeah, great point. Because if they don't take the time to understand you or don't care to understand, that could, that, that could hit us tougher. Mm -hmm. uh, and you combine that with what uh, Derek had mentioned <laughs> earlier, where sometimes our affiliation, uh, <laughs> sometimes it's our... I've seen people get out, get in fights over Dallas Cowboys, right? Yeah. Uh, definitely over Republican and Democrat. Uh, sometimes the instant, the place that we work at, do I drink Coke or Pepsi, coffee or tea? It's so many different ways we can parse things. Uh, so it's it's good to know that when we're talking with people, it's sometimes they may feel this way too. We may downplay politics, but some that we're discussing those things with they may, similar to what we had mentioned, they have trouble letting go of those reins too and, and finding allegiance to Jesus. Great stuff. Thank you guys. Uh, many of you guys in the chat, you express that we may start off judgmental, but because of Jesus, because of the Holy Spirit, we, we get to that place where we are merciful um, because we remember the scriptures. You know, We, we want mercy to be shown to us. Uh, right. So we want to show it to others. Amen. And uh, let's look at this last uh, piece here. When we think about solidarity and empathy, and this is just some food for thought for you guys, uh, as you think about other people as well, you know, which reaction is most natural to you during emotional tense conversations? Are you a fighter? Are you a flyer? Do you freeze? Or have you learned to fawn, you know, like a deer, you just submit, right? I just submit just so I can get through it. That's just something to, to think about as we look into this last aspect. So we looked over allegiance, mercy over judgment, and lastly, solidarity and empathy. And Julie, you can take us through this last one. Okay. So in uh, solidarity and, in, and empathy, uh, I appreciate that little, that little graphic there because, you know, that's what we need to be. We need to be that solidarity. The, the people of God need to have solidarity. We need to be unified. We need to be one. And in Galatians 3, verse 27, there is a solidarity. It says, for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Imagine your morning starting off with you waking up in the morning and you just walk outside with no clothes. How shocked would your neighbors be? We need to think of it the same way. We have to clothe ourselves with Christ. It has to feel like that same way. If I were to walk out without clothes, the same feeling I need to feel like when I walk out that door without being clothed with Christ. And that's what we need to have a solidarity about. We are putting on Jesus in the morning and we are walking out the door clothed with Jesus around us. We are reminded of solidarity in Christ from this scripture. You know, I'm gonna kind of date myself here. Um, you know, we think about 
you know, the Yankees versus the Red Sox, the Lakers versus the Celtics. We, the kingdom is not built in that fashion. We don't have rivalries. We don't have uh, the other teams that we dislike that much. We don't like the, you know, like the Giants and the Cowboys or any of those names. That's how I'm dating myself. Uh, we are on the same team. I think about all the brothers and sisters that Ileana and I have, have been mentored and been discipled by. There has been just about every culture, every age group uh, we have been involved with. And there was a solidarity there because we were all clothed in Christ. I think about the Curtises when they first came to staff here in Dallas and uh, they were part of the East and they had the, uh, I guess, the, uh, the duty to, to disciple Ileana and I. And they had just gotten married and they were young and wide-eyed, and uh, whenever we met the first time, I remember then their hesitancy to talk to us about our marriage, just because they had just started off, and we were already into, you know, five to seven years into our marriage with kids, and, and we had all these things that they had not had been a part of yet, and, you know, I remember just telling them, hey, guys, you're here to help us get to heaven. And you're here, whether you're young or old or just newlyweds or not, that we trust in God enough to trust you to be in our lives. And, uh, you know, I'm grateful now that he's in Houston taking care of my oldest daughter, uh, Gabriella. And uh, we, we communicated at the conference and we still just laugh about how we were put together by God uh, to help each other get to heaven. But we are on the same team. I could have looked down at them because they were young. I could have looked down at them because they were culturally not like me. But, you know, I knew God's kingdom and God was taking care of us. As citizens of, of the kingdom, God designed us to put the interests of others first right? That's what Jesus lived. In Philippians 2 verse 4, it says, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of the others. We look at verse 8, it says, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. What empathy? He had empathy for us, enough to die on the cross for us. And we have to have that same empathy for those brothers and sisters that are around us and for those that are in the empire, for those that are oppressed, those that have, don't have the power to speak for themselves. And uh, we now live in a time where it's very evident that we need to help those that need help. We help our brothers and sisters first, but we also need to help those in the world and the empire that need our assistance. And uh, the last thing I'm going to share in, in the book, Escaping the Beast, there's a statement there that I really, really liked. Um, it says, we must strive for reconciliation with God first, reconciliation with others, and reconciliation for others. We think about that. That is our solidarity. That is what we are here for. We need to have first get ourselves reconciled with God. We need to reconcile with those around us, brothers and sisters, and also those of the empires. But we also need to reconcile those who cannot speak for themselves. And uh, I am a, uh, as I went through this book, I became aware, I saw myself a little differently. Uh, we spoke a lot about judgment and uh, definitely I need to be less judgmental. I work in a job where I go and testify. I receive evidence, drug evidence, and I can go through all these names of these individuals, defendants, 
that law has deemed that uh, they have violated law of the state of Texas. And uh, I can go, why are they here? Why are they in this situation? Did they not work hard enough? Did they not focus enough on God? Did they not do A, B, and C? What happened? And for me, I have to watch that, that judgmental part of me. I don't know the full picture. I get evidence, comes in, and I can make judgment calls on what I see before me and not knowing that individual, not knowing the true story of what happened. And uh, I have to be merciful in that situation. We as members of the kingdom must be advocates of peace. And we have to keep that in the forefront, uh, whether we are walking in church among disciples or among the empires. And uh, we uh, look at the last question, a Clint, but I, I think these three principles, uh, allegiance to Jesus and the kingdom, uh, mercy triumph over judgment, and solidarity and empathy, if we keep these in mind, and if we are prayerful and thoughtful in everything we come across, then I think that is as disciples, that is what we have in store for us with, uh, you know, everything that occurs now uh, before us in 2020. So we can look at question number four, Clint. Yes. Thank you, Julianne. Mm -hmm. So as we jump into our breakout rooms, we'll have about two to three people or two to three screens at least uh, per breakout room. We want to spend 15 minutes on this question. And really it's just a digesting of the three pillars, allegiance, mercy, empathy. Which one of those were you like, this is tough for me to really grasp right now, or it has been tough for me to grasp as we consider the current events that we're going through right now with the, the social injustice, with the, some of the things that's happening with our politics. What is God specifically talking to you about? It's like, okay, he wants to double click down in this subject uh, for you. So let's just spend some time. You'll get to know, introduce yourself to the person that's in the group with you. Let's just, what, what did you learn from tonight? Which one of those three uh, are the toughest for you? And then we'll come back uh, and end our time together uh, with a couple announcements. And uh, the big thing, what did you learn? And which thing is the toughest uh, for you? Uh, and when we come back, we will discuss the next one in December, which would be much more dialogue because now that we set the stage on how to have the conversation, now we can really deep dive into some of these subjects. So without any further ado, we'll open up uh, the breakout rooms and remember to introduce yourself uh, to the person uh, there. And what, what did you learn from tonight? Uh, all right, we got everybody coming back in and what I'll let you guys know, if you do want to jump back into your breakout rooms and, and continue to talk, I will open up the breakout rooms if you want to continue conversation with those in your group. One of the things I would like to capture before we go, and before I say that, Julian, thanks again, brother, uh, for leading our thoughts uh, for the evening and really setting the stage for having real talk with the kingdom lens. I think this is going to go a long way in future conversations, brother. So thank you again. As I mentioned, real action, what do you want to take out of this time? So much of what we discussed uh, in our breakout room, let's take that into our weeks. Let's take that into our conversations as we continue to have real talk. This is the thing that I would like to throw out for our last piece is a poll of what's next. What is something that you would like to talk about next? So is it something dealing with politics? Is it ethnic or cultural humility? Is it our own church culture uh, and, and working through and, and using that in a positive way? Is it the LG, uh, LBGTQ uh, community and, and working through that? What is something 
that you will love to be an agenda item for our next time together. And as we mentioned, uh, we're going to have a, a, a heavier time, less time of teaching, and more time of talking uh, in our future uh, conversation. So we'll use this data uh, that you guys uh, are having here, and uh, you will see future emails. So thank you again uh, for the opportunity. Uh, as you guys are voting here, I'll give about 10 more seconds, and uh, let me have uh, Ashley, let's have uh, Miss Delory, uh, Angel Delory, if you can close us out in prayer. And thank you guys again for hopping in tonight and spending some time uh, being able to have some real talk and have some real learning as well. Father, thank you so much for this time tonight. Thank you for the brothers and sisters, our hearts to be open and to learn and to grow in ways that we um, definitely need to grow as a family, as a group, God. Thank you for the leaders. Thank you for their hearts to lead us in this direction. Mm -hmm. I pray that you can help us, um, we all help us, Father, to keep growing, um, keep our hearts open, help us to have empathy and, and really, really love each other and take care of each other the way that you want us to, the way that um, Jesus leads us to. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you much. Well, thank you, guys. Yes, I unmute everybody.